Ransomware and online extortion are big business, and bargaining with the criminal gangs making big profit is not for the faint of heart. This week I have the great pleasure to have a fireside chat with Moti Crystal, Nest Negotiation Strategies Ltd. Moti describes himself as a professional negotiator. He is the CEO of Nest, a firm providing negotiating skill to whoever finds himself in a predicament that can be solved with words, from talking to investors to managing union relationships. Recently, he has been called to negotiate ransomware and corporate extortion cases. It will be an open and candid conversation on his role, experiences, and current events. Here, uh, thanks for everyone for joining. I appreciate that. Um, you know, I plan to do these every week, and. Uh, it's not as stressful as as doing a physical event, um, but uh, you know there's some definitely some stress involved. Uh, there's uh, there's a couple of people joined, so I expect people to trickle in while we while we're doing this. And uh, I, please, people, like just as soon as you come in, I think everybody kind of joins in on mute. Uh, but just make sure that you uh, stay that way just for the sake of others. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to spend uh, the next uh, you know, 45 minutes having conversation um, mainly about ransomware and uh, Moti uh, Cristo's um, experience in the field. Uh, what we can do is, uh, you know, while we're having this conversation, if you want to chime in, and ask questions, feel, you know, please feel, to, feel free to do so. Uh, that's why the kind of the session is is for, uh, and then what I'd like to get out of this uh, conversation is couple couple things. A is um, to learn who who is Moti Crystal. You know what's his experience is like, and um, you know I, I pride myself by uh, allowing people from industry to present themselves. Um, this industry is full of uh, you know tech and and uh, you know buzzwords and so on, but I think that it's very important that we understand. Uh, who are the people involved behind behind the space um and and then secondly i would love to you know for the people to uh, you know to get something out of it learn a bit about the process of negotiation of ransomware um you know and just what happens kind of behind the curtains because we we hear um quite a few times on the news we hear about cases of ransomware negotiations and so on but we don't actually have uh, never been exposed to um what the process is like and uh, just in general, you know what what to expect and so on. Uh, so, Moti, before we get started, maybe we can uh, you can give us a quick uh, brief overview of yourself. You know how you got to where you are today, uh, what your past roles were were like, and just in general, um, you know how were you were you in high school, you know type of question. <laughs> yeah, thanks, David, and thanks again for the opportunity. Uh, I wish I could do it in person, but uh, it seems that. Uh, we won't be able to travel for a couple of months. Uh, um, I'm, I'm a negotiator. I started my career um, in the Israeli prime minister's office, serving uh, four prime ministers uh, in the 90s, uh, working for uh, Rabin, Perez, Netanyahu, El Barak. I was part of the Israeli negotiation teams, first with Jordan and later on with the Palestinians, a very famous 2000 Clinton Barack Arafat uh, summit, and uh, slowly, slowly, I grew into the uh, profession of, of uh, not not hiding the fact, no need to hide the fact that I'm a, a negotiator, and no need to uh, say that I'm a lawyer or a strategic consultant. Uh, today, uh, thank God, I'm uh, uh, you know fully aware uh, of the fact that uh, yes, I'm a negotiator. And uh, this is something that um, I'm, I'm very proud of. Uh, in the last 25 years, I've been part of the Israeli uh, security apparatus uh, hostage and crisis negotiations. And this is where I you know, learned or experienced uh, intense uh, hostage, uh, barricade, uh, kidnap uh, negotiations with our toughest uh, uh, enemies, and uh, at some point, uh, almost eight years ago, I uh, got a call from uh, a colleague um, who uh, at that time was a VP security of a big uh, uh, chip uh, producer, uh, one of the, the largest in the world. Uh, they were hacked by a white hat hacker, and uh, um, that was actually my first uh, negotiation, and I quickly 
adjusted and adopted the technique of hostage negotiations to actually uh, real-life uh, real uh, um, real cyber uh, negotiations. So that's a little bit background. And since then, I'm uh, deeply involved in um, negotiating, uh, being involved in cyber crisis uh, worldwide. Great, thank you very much. So you, you said you have a couple of slides to, to yeah. sh showcase and then maybe we can jump into the Q&A afterwards. So I, I think you sure, are- Sure, because I, I, think, I, think, I think that the most important thing is to see a little bit about actually how, the, uh, how it works. And, and you know, we all know that when we hit by a crisis, we uh, deploy uh, incident response. And, and my, my claim is that despite the fact that incident response really covered the uh, the event from all technological aspects, uh, uh, be it uh, forensic investigation, recovery, and some legal compliance issues, uh, uh, we would like to pay attention uh, to the, uh, what I call smart professional uh, communication with the cyber criminals, because this really, as, as, as I show you through some of the changes, can add a lot of value to the overall management of the, uh, of the uh, uh, of the crisis, and I would got, like to go through quickly the classic mistakes that that people do while communication communicating with cyber criminals. The first of all is is lying. Um, it's very difficult for people to understand to incorporate the fact that in cyber crisis, actually the attackers, the the threat actor, knows a lot more than you. He usually resides in your network for a couple of uh, weeks or months, definitely in strategic ransomware. And uh, when they ask you how many computers were hit, uh, which means how many keys uh, you need to pay for, uh, don't try to lie. This is an example of someone who really, you know, uh, uh, a CEO, before I, I jump in, uh, you know, provided an answer which was not accurate, and that was the answer of the... Uh, of the um, of, of the attacker, it was a cosmetic company back uh, two years ago. Uh, you said that you have only three computers encrypted. Why are you cheating? We see everything. You have at least six computers. You need to pay an extra 0.6 uh, uh, Bitcoin. Just an example of number one rule of any hostage negotiators: don't uh, uh, lie to the. Uh, uh, hostage taker in the in the virtual in the cyber world, it's even more important because uh, they are much more knowledgeable, informed than than, uh, 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 than you are. Uh, another problem is is to ignore. There was a there was a service company last year that was hacked. Uh, they um, the uh, ransom requested was two million uh, US dollars. Um, the company didn't really communicate getting ignored and what they have is actually uh, dumped some of the data they extracted on the dark net uh, and the uh, the dark web and they in one of the most important blogs in the industry uh, the the blogger actually had to publish that the uh, uh, that 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 uh, threat actor dumped information and only after that, and after the uh, ransom uh, uh, was uh, uh, doubled for four millions, they actually uh, started. Uh, we started to negotiate with them in in a much more constructive uh, way. So don't ignore uh, the, the the threat actor immediately when you get the the uh, the ransom note. Try to engage, uh, communicate um, in a, in what I, I would recommend immediately professionally. Um, sometimes many people miss the point. Uh, that that was a that was a ransom note of a, of a, a call center startup, uh, and 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 the threat was very interesting. You must send us seventy five uh, US dollars, and and see the sophistication. Uh, if we don't receive the money by Tuesday, Israel, of course, they know that they knew that it was an Israeli company. We will delete encryption key. By Thursday, we will email customer, and Saturday, we will start selling data. That was a particular interesting case because we had a uh, suspicious that the CTO, we, who had a conflict with the founders of the startup, really was the person behind behind the, the, uh, the attack. So we managed the whole event 
uh, not knowing actually uh, whether the CTO who is managing the event is not actually the perpetrator. Um, another, another interesting case would we'll try to identify the motivation as a blockchain company two years ago. Um, you see the initial contact with the hacker was on May 24th. Uh, the hacker demanded uh, 20 Ethereum. The payment was made immediately. That's also, again, a typical mistake. But the, the, the uh, attack continued. So th th that was a very interesting question, which I will not elaborate what stood behind this, this attack. But it was not, uh, um, uh, I would call what we call carpet bombing. It was a very targeted to that particular uh, CEO. And it was more of a personal extortion than, than, uh, than a company uh, uh, extortion. We want to understand the motivation. People say that many times it's, it's uh, money. That's a forex company back in 2015, um, uh, but it's not always just the money. Sometimes it's a competition. Sometimes it's a personal matter, revenge, and uh, that's that's really a key a key question to 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 understand. So another mistake. I have, I have, I have a question, if you don't mind asking. Sure. Um, so how do you determine, how do you like first determine what the motives are? Uh, you mentioned that it's not totally clear. Do you, do you ask them to clarify or yeah. are the uh, demands well, I, always? I, I, yeah, I, I don't ask them to clarify their motivation, but what we do in the methodology, in the process, we try to profile them. For example, uh, when they say, uh, this is a Russian guy, the Forex company, uh, we are not kind of people who need just some kind of money quickly. This was the request for the 500 bitcoins. So you see, you, you understand a little bit about the targeted and that actually was a, a, a targeted industry on the Forex companies. And once we started to see some hints in the text, we communicate competitors and we discover that actually um, uh, we were not the only one who were uh, who were hit. Um, we have to remember that there are people behind the the, uh, uh, the notes. For example, uh, a note that says we have a big experience in breaching networks and developing malware. What what can't be what cannot be said about any external security experts you can hire? You see, actually here some sort of a professional pride. So the motivation at that particular case was to show actually the strength, which was indeed very strong, uh, 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 malware. Um, another, another example is that that was an interesting one. It's very recent. Um, I was communicating with, with, uh, with an Asian group and I was Alexei at that particular case. And suddenly I get an email from a Gmail account and it says, hi, it's me, Bruce, with the uh, um, um, Proton mail, uh, which he communicated with me. And he says, something went wrong with my mailbox. I use this Gmail mailbox temporary. But, you know, as a negotiator and having understanding the dynamic behind the, the, the thing is that this guy really wanted to communicate with me separately from probably the communication that was uh, uh, transparent to the rest of, of his team. What I'm saying that there are criminals, people behind the text, and we need to understand their personal, psychological uh, 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 motivation. We never assume that they're just here for the money or they just uh, uh, need the, uh, quick money. Uh, uh, um, again, we, a classic mistake is that we treat them as, as criminals. One of the points of uh, so-called tension that I have with the CEO or the client or the CISO is when I start to call them um, business partners or our uh, counterparts, this really puts people in stress. They're like, they are, they are bloody criminals. You know, they, they infiltrated my system. They put my business at risk. And I said that's fine, but I do treat them as a, as a, as a, um, as, as human being. Uh, this is my communication with, with the Russian guys, 
And uh, well, I guess you have to put, a, they say to me, you will have to put a little trust in an entity that has enterprise, that had your enterprise tossed upside down in less than a week and still trying to help you out of it. And then I send them a, you know, a, a, a bling. And then say, how do you say in Russia, trust but verify, which is a very common, uh, a very common uh, term in Russians. And that's a great point that they say. So I do treat them as a, as a business uh, <laughs> partner. What Another. Are, what other what profiling do you use? It seems like you almost, you know, the kind of the baseline is to profile the, you know, the adversary, like, you know, just to, to find out who they are uh, as, as a person. Uh, do you use any other me methodologies, like for like like you profile like criminals, or is this something they just exactly like, yeah do? okay yeah yeah in, in we 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 the only thing we have um, is the uh, not only thing actually we have the communication we have the 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 text that they are uh, uh, sending uh, okay. And then, because I work closely with the technological, with the cyber expert, uh, sometimes I do send a communication signal which could have a technological implication. For example, a ceasefire. Okay? I said, well, I'm going to approve the payment in the board. I trust that you will not make any movement in the system um, in the next 48 hours. And then, through the forensic and through the, the uh, uh, investigative uh, uh, effort, if they keep this ceasefire, uh, this really adds a, a point of, I would say, guarantee. I don't want to use the term trust, but a point of, of, uh, of, uh, of guarantee uh, in their behavior. And it adds to my profiling mean, because uh, usually 72, 96 hours after uh the the initial contact i can provide um um a solid understanding of the event and of the perpetrator which serves as a very uh, uh, uh as a very important um uh, factor in the decision of the board and the ceo whether to pay the ransom uh, uh or not Another important uh, uh, question is, what are we negotiating? Um, we, we not necessarily negotiate the discount. Sometimes we negotiate discount, but many times we, we, uh, um, we negotiate information. This is once I established good contacts, the CISO said, well, I have a list of questions that I really would like to ask these people. And uh, by the way, this is, uh, this is a communication with one of the most sophisticated and uh, brutal uh, ransom that are currently in the, uh, uh, in the market. The CISO sends a list of questions and see the detailed answer that I get from them. Uh, very recently, uh, the, 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 the penetration, the, the, the uh, mails, how they entered the log of how they uh, 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 penetrated the system. And this, um, I have no uh, understanding whatsoever in cyber uh, uh, security beyond my engagement with, with, with the guys in the last uh, uh, five years, six years. But the CISO told me that this information we negotiate for a discount. That's a financial institution last year a big uh, financial institution in the U.S. Uh, they requested uh, 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 two million, and then I said, "Thank you for replying. I want to finish it today, so let's communicate intensively. What if it will be one million? Uh, and uh, we can see you want to help, but we cannot offer a bit under one million. We finalize this deal in one million when." Um, shortly after, we realized that other financial institutions from the same type. Uh, really paid uh, 0.7, 1.7, uh, 1.8 uh, 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 million. So sometimes you do negotiate when the decision is to pay. We do negotiate for a uh, uh, for a discount. So in a nutshell, what I'm saying that as you would like to rely on a very professional, sophisticated cybersecurity and incident response team. I would urge uh, 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 companies and also incidents response team, IR teams, uh, to cooperate in order to really 
um, provide or add a professional communication with the threat actors in order to um, uh, provide a more comprehensive and professional question um, uh, and uh, service to the uh, uh, company. So that's uh, basically uh, that's my, uh, my 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 two cents on the uh, and be 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 beware when sharing the uh, the recording. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll, uh, yeah, I'll pixelate some of that stuff after. Uh, hopefully nobody took a screenshot or that. Um, so, you know, what about the things that are not said? Like, you know, how, the ter like the terms reading between the lines, um, you know, like, are there things that, that you, you know, you experience that the, you know, if, let's say if the, um, if the person is not asking for certain things or, you know, you profile in them by, but not necessarily what they say is maybe by what they don't say, you know, is it something that you come across as well? Or just from, from your experience? Yeah. Well, not, 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 not in the cyber sphere. Mm -hmm. One of the, uh, your question refers to one of the big difference between the, uh, um, a physical hostage or barricade situation and cyber, uh, ransom attacks. We might find, and law enforcement uh, negotiators uh, see it many times, mainly in the, in, in, in the U.S., that the hostage taker, a person who barricades himself with his wife and family, uh, and, 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 and is very confused. He really doesn't, uh, doesn't understand what uh, uh, we really, you know, we don't understand what he really wants. And he's confused, and he wants to be heard, and he wants to get attention in the cybersphere, that's not the case. The threat actors know exactly whether they are motivated by revenge, uh, a frustrated employee, whether they are motivated by uh, extortion data in order to sell it uh, to competitors, or just by uh, uh, industry of, of ransomware, just, just by the money. So the confusion, or we don't know what they want, uh, we don't see it in the cybersphere. Mm -hmm. You know exactly what people want from the very first. Uh, great. And then, um, so how do you know if, if uh, you know, once you pay, how do you know that they're going to decrypt the data? Like, you, you know, is is this something that comes comes to mind? Well, you don't know. Yeah. You don't know. Uh, in the real world, in the physical world, in hostage uh, situation, there's always a quid quote pro. And in the physical world, it could uh, it could get you, you you get guarantees. But in in the cyber sphere, you don't know. And there's always this risk of. But uh, I can tell you of uh, many 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 cases I did in 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 the last five years, there was no single case that ransom was paid and a decryption key was not provided. Sometimes, because of recovery technological efforts, the decryption key, we find it challenging uh, to recover the data uh, because of the uh, data was damaged in the encryption or in the recovery. But a decryption, a valid decryption key is always provided. And when we deal with extortion of data, destruction of data, of not selling it to, to competitors, is something uh, which people, uh, which a criminal keep the word. Why? Because there is something that we call the honor uh, code, uh, code of honor uh, of, of criminals. And, and they are here uh, for their own motivation. And they know that if they will um, breach the agreement, they actually damage their own uh, business and their own industry. We have to remember that there is a business logic in the way they uh, uh, they deal with, with with ransom. Very very interesting. And what about the, you know, I was reading somewhere that you know conventional wisdom up to, up until a few years back was never pay ransom that ransom criminals demanded because it only encouraged them you know to do more of that what are your thoughts around that or is that doesn't work anymore you know yeah, it, 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 it uh, well i'm smiling because um uh be, because of two things uh, first of all paying or not paying the ransom is always a business decision 
Uh, it's a risk management and it's a business decision. Uh, I met uh, boards that uh, insisted of not paying the ransom. And uh, yesterday I, I came across, I was consulted a case that uh, recovery, the, the technological guys uh, recovered uh, um, uh, the data and still the CEO wanted to pay the ransom because he thought that he will buy some uh, 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 piece from this uh, threat actor. So paying or not paying is always a business decision. It depends on the cost of no deal, the cost of no pay. Uh, there's, there's a rumor that then when you pay, you go on a certain blacklist of uh, extortable, uh, of people who will uh, be extorted again because they tend to... Uh, and, uh, you know, with all my um, uh, network of professionals who dig the, the, the dark web, we never saw any uh, empirical proof to the fact that uh, there are blacklists and, um, you know, dealing with uh, hundreds of uh, cases in the last five years, I never came across a company that was hit again. Uh, by by the same, you know, it's not that there are no attempts. All the time there are attempts. The CISOs, if there are CISOs here, uh, they 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 know it, but uh, there are always attempts. But not by the same group. Why? Because that's not their business practice. They move on. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the questions you raised was, um, you know, does culture matter? You know, in terms of of uh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, one one of the one of the elements that I try to uh, as early as possible in the profiling is to identify where these people come from, uh, whether they are uh, North Koreans uh, or uh, Russians or uh, Eastern European or Chinese or Taiwanese. Uh, why? Because it matters the uh, from formal way of communication, informal way of communication, um, uh, time zone uh, effects, um, anecdotes, uh, um, terminology, um, whom I present myself uh, as a man, as a woman, uh, as a professional, as, um, as a friend, as the son of the owner, of a family business, uh, these are things that I always take into consideration. And uh, um, uh, you know whether they use Google Translate to send the the uh, uh, the, the, the communication, so you you write in a more simple uh, um, English. Uh, um, it 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 matters. It matters in many many aspects of of your communication. Do you have any funny stories of, of uh, translations that went wrong? That somebody used a, uh, a translator, and you know how Google Translator is. It's not necessarily one-to-one. -one. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, the, the, there, was, uh, there was one, one, uh, uh, one, one time that there's in Russian, uh, room, room and figure is trans number. Uh, is, is translated, is the same translation, we use the same word. Uh, so, uh, you know, the, the, the threat actor always kept talking about rooms and I, 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 at the beginning, and then I realized uh, uh, what, what, what he meant, but uh, he was referring to rooms, and I said, like, what, what type of rooms? Uh, 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 there's a question here, uh, guilting, uh, yeah, guilting the ransomware, uh, per ever work uh, in negotiation, perpetrator. Uh, perpetrator, and then what was the best method to use in order to get cooperation from the from the threat actor to the trade secrets? Uh, uh, do you think the ransom of a perpetrator ever work in? Well, well, yes. Uh, uh, well, the, the question is, do you think is a technique? Uh, I will I will definitely uh, 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 mention it in a second an example uh, with this family business. Uh, what what was the best method used in order to get cooperation? It depends. It it always depends. And and uh, you know in in my 
in my work, not in the cybersphere as a negotiator, I always say that uh, uh, we never say always. Everything we do in any negotiation, not in cyber, is context-based. The same applies here. Uh, there's no one method that works. It depends on the situation, on the motivation, on the culture. So, you know, you use many, many uh, 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 methods in order to get cooperation. Uh, guilting, yes, there was one uh, family business uh, in Israel that was completely shut down as a result of the ransom uh, um, attack. And I presented myself as the, uh, as the uh, son uh, of, the, of the owner. And uh, I used, the, you know, I, I, I wrote to the, to the, you know, I don't know if you are father, but you're definitely son of someone. And uh, uh, you don't want anyone to hurt your father the way you hurt uh, my father. And, uh, and it helped. I mean, uh, at that particular uh, uh, case, uh, he, what, what I managed to do is I managed to split the ransom into uh, five keys and to buy, not, not to pay for five keys, but to buy only the one that was crucial. Uh, to my uh, uh, to the recovery uh, effort to, to 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 the database and that was the method that I use yes by definitely by 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 guilty. So you basically reduce it to the to the human level, you know, like uh, it's always yeah. That's from that's, the criminal. that's what we do as negotiators. We we right. work on the human. Uh, yeah. So what platform do you use to uh, to communicate to negotiate? Um. In previous years, it was uh, text messages, WhatsApp, uh, and other uh, Viber, Telegram, uh, Dust. Uh, but in recent, uh, in the last year and a half, uh, they are very, very cautious. The threat actors, and usually we use email. They use uh, secure Proton Mail or something like this. And uh, there was one incident that they used Gmail, and you know, with some cooperation with law enforcement, and uh, you know, Israeli cyber technologies, we can get a lead from the uh, IP using Gmail. This is why they're very, very cautious. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, if you can share, like, um, you know, the top lesson le learned, like from from your experience, you know, from. Uh, negotiations and also like you know how organizations deal with it. and I, I I forgot to ask you like the beginning you know how at what stage do you typically get contacted and and by whom you know from from the organization who who do you typically le deal with is it the CISO or do you de deal with the board of directors or you know who within the company do you typically interact well, with? and also it, uh, last question before I jump into this to this one is like um, you know, how do you make decisions? Do you have to share these decisions with the with the company before you make you know take action, or is it something that you can do on your own? Well, usually I'm called in uh, either by uh, IR teams uh, uh, with which I I, I cooperate uh, on an institutional level, um, uh, or by uh, law firms, or by the client uh, himself or herself. Uh, people who heard me and know about uh, this type of of service, and then I communicate with whoever uh, the the company assigned to make the, the event. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's the CEO, sometimes it's the CISO. Uh, recently, I communicate in parallel. Uh, with the CEO and with the chairman of the board, which added another layer of, of, of complexity because of the tension between management and the board. Uh, sometimes I, I communicate only with the IR team uh, or the crisis uh, uh, manager. It always depends. Uh, you know, sometimes I, I called uh, to come and provide uh, my assessment on, 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 uh, to the board or to the management. It always depends. It's very, very dynamic, and there are no rules uh, uh, with whom you 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 communicate. 
And do you have to, before you make a decision to go either direction, do you like have to brief them prior to act, taking actions? Uh, or is it something you can do like dynamically? Well, it depends. It depends on the magnitude of the events. Usually, I take a very, very limited mandate uh, on taking a decision, and I ask the uh, I ask to get a clear mandate on whether uh, I negotiate now for time. Uh, should I start moving towards uh, uh, implementation or towards closing the deal? Everything is strong in close coordination with the, with the technological teams because. Uh, um, sometimes the, 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 the client says, you know, like, I need you to gain me three more days. But I see that the behavior, and we see through the technology, that the behavior of the threat actor is very aggressive, very impatient. And, you know, I said, you know, three days, I, I, I cannot guarantee. I can chew another 24 hours, you know, but... Uh, the most important thing is to to stay in close contact with the uh, and and feel the threat actors uh, on 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 the human. But uh, I never take any decision to move beyond the uh, explicit mandate. And when I'm not giving a mandate, I request the mandate from from the uh, from the company from the client. And and what happened? Walk me through like what happened after it's all over. Whether the you know. The end results is is successful or not? Um, is there a recap from the company in terms of uh, moving ahead? What's going to happen? Uh, maybe some policies in place. Um, and then what happened to to these threat actors? So did they did they you know befriend you on Facebook or uh, you know add you to Instagram or did you like invite you over for you know for drinks or how or say hey if you if you're in the same Petersburg I might as well drop uh, by. Job uh, I will in Russia in in cyber in, not not in cyber like in, in business negotiation, and um, in my work in Russia I never give example uh, from my cyber uh, security work because uh, you never know. Actually, I never know who are the uh, 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 twenty people on this call. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yes, but, yes. Uh, colleagues, maybe one of them. Hopefully, yeah. maybe the cyber security. <laughs> Yeah, I hope you know them all, David. Uh, but uh, the the uh, the dark side, uh, you know. No, I I was never tempted to go to the. Uh, uh, I was never approached, and I was never tempted to go to the uh, to the dark side. Maybe because people know uh, who am I and what's my uh, you know uh, value system. Uh, did you have a case where somebody recognized you from the past, despite the fact that you? You kind of pretended to be someone else, or was it never happened? No, uh, no, no. Well, no, this this never happened. And um, well, now the question is, I, I would say that I didn't have yet a second encounter with a gang. And now I want to be very careful by saying. As far as I know, and this is an attempt that I'm trying to do with an Israeli, with a leading Israeli cybersecurity, there is no um, attribution yet done between a certain uh, ransom, that, that I'm talking about the aggressive one, uh, Aryu, Kariva, Sodobiniki, Maze. There was no attribution between these malwares a specific crime group or crime gang, okay? I think that I negotiated all four or five of them, um, but not for the second time. And uh, speak, uh, talking with, with uh, security experts, uh, they told me that not we're not sure that, for example, if we see a company that was hit by a maze ransom, uh, that it will be the same gang which will be using the uh, which like only one gang uses maze because what they do is that they dump on 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 the uh, on on the dark uh, web they dump previous version of this maze malware or Ariuk uh, uh, or our evil and uh, other criminal gangs actually are taking advantage and using it. 
using older versions of, of this. So uh, no, I never came across and add to this that I communicate very differently uh, with every particular, uh, it's like, like show, you know, you, 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 you put a completely different identity in terms of who you are, communication, level of communication, jokes, anecdotes, uh, smileys, formal, informal uh, communication. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's super super interesting. It just shows you how prolific, um, you know, you've been doing this for such a long time, and you haven't come across kind of the same the same group. Yep, uh, it's very prolific, and you know, it's also interesting. Like every once in a while, you hear the news like of a company that got destroyed completely because of ransomware. There was a even here in New York, there was a um, I believe it's a real estate company uh, that had to shut down. The CEO basically had to lay off three hundred employees because all their systems got encrypted. I don't know what the story behind was, whether they did not pay or would not, but yeah, there's some pretty sad stories in terms of the impact of, of these ransomware. It seems to be uh, quite prolific. Um, so any recommendations, last last parting words? And I don't know if anybody has any other questions, but we're kind of running out of time. But any parting recommendations or uh, aside from obviously, you know, uh, if you have a leak in the roof, you call a roofer, and if you have like ransomware, you call a you know negotiation uh, professional as opposed to try to do it on your own. Any other uh, recommendations? No, I, I would I would really uh, emphasize that uh, uh, if you are from uh, IR team, uh, it costs you uh, almost nothing to add the. Uh, um, a professional element on, on that. If you are a company, uh, it will definitely assist you. Um, it's it's a profession. It's a growing industry. The ransom and it's it's here uh, uh, to stay. Um, you know, insure yourself. I'm not I'm, I'm not getting into insurance uh, uh, policies, etc. But. Uh, uh, make sure you have a good insurance uh, that covers also a professional negotiator, uh, and um, and uh, understand that like the COVID nineteen, uh, it's a crisis that hits the company. However, um, you can definitely get over it uh, uh, working in a structured methodological uh, manner. Yeah, it's it's funny we haven't uh, we haven't really touched upon uh, any any kind of current events, and uh, I don't know if it's a good thing or not. You know, there's a lot of conversation about COVID nineteen of the impact and so on. Did you do you see any uptick in in uh, ransomware cases because of that? Or I know com companies in general are under yeah, under duress right now for because of moving to digital so quickly and so on. So there's a lot of that going on. Um, can you talk a bit about that? And then I guess what assist the come up a couple questions here. Lessons learned from an experience negotiation you had an encounter previously. Um, something you'll you take forward. Yeah, I, I I would I I would think that my latest lessons learned is is the the the, the recent event, the one with Bruce uh, that uh, we negotiated for time. The uh, CEO uh, of the company really wanted to pay uh, in the first uh, 48 hours. It's, it, was, it was a big company that uh, we sure that it was not hit accidentally at that point because they were just before a very, very big merger. Uh, they were acquired by by a, by a big competitor like billions, uh, and the CEO wanted in the first seventy two hours really wanted to put this behind. Um, the the um, I was in, in that case I was with uh, one of the leading uh, IR team companies that I work with, very very professional. And uh, the, the crisis manager, the IR uh, company, really had a good feeling that they would be able to manage and to recover most of the data. Uh, so uh, um, the lesson is uh, if you, you as a professional, be it the IR 
or be it a negotiator, you as a professional has significant more perspective and understanding of the event than the decision maker. Because for them, it's a disaster, it's a crisis, they want to, to put it over. Many times, uh, uh, you can talk the uh, decision maker towards giving you more time to work. In the physical world, as a negotiator, you say to the SWOT team or to the crisis manager, wait, give me another two, three hours in order to get you more intel, whatever. In the cybersphere, um, you have uh, to be more persistent on sh showing uh, in full transparency to the decision makers the full range of cost of paying and cost of not paying, including uh, PR damage, legal damages, compliance damages. And these are things that uh, the last incident um, uh, really strengthened my, uh, um, uh, my, my behavior to spend more time with decision makers before they make a decision whether to pay or not. Of course, they didn't pay and we managed to recover fully and to resume uh, uh, service within seven days. Which is, uh, so it's, it sounds like you have to manage uh, you know, 360. You have to manage the expectations yeah. as well. And something there's, there's emphasis on that. Um, you know, almost like, uh, you know, negotiate with them as well. You have to negotiate both both sides. Um, so so yeah. there's a question here from a good yeah. friend, uh, William Beer. Uh, when under an attack, should press release be issued to try and get ahead of the news cycle? Yeah, well, you know, that's, that, that's, a, great, that's a great point, which I, I, we didn't have time to talk about. And this is the integration among the various stakeholders in managing the crisis. Uh, there's a negotiator, there's the recovery, there's an investigation, there's the PR, there's the legal team, the compliance. And uh, uh, again, if I link it to the other question, one of the lessons learned in recent events, because the three big recent events in the last four months were with companies that are heavily regulated. And then, uh, 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 William, the question is not the press release vis-a-vis -vis the, the, the public, but more important, the communication and the notification that you need to provide to the regulators. And of course, once you provide it to the regulator, it becomes public. And then uh, um, what the, the, the very, very thin balance, which I, of course, try to give my inputs in the uh, terrible triangle between the PR uh, company the lawyers and, 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 and myself, because sometimes the PR, when, when PR guys and or the CEO says, uh, oh, we suffered the maintenance issues, um, sometimes this actually motivates the attacker because he was not given the appropriate... Right. Uh, uh, it, 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 the credit, it motivates them to, to, to cause more damage. So there's a very thin line. And um, usually I try, uh, as you said, uh, uh, David, I, I try to negotiate my way uh, also to the drafts of the text, which is uh, uh, either released to the public or communicate to the regulators. Yeah, super interesting. Um, OK, good. Uh, any if if there's no other questions, uh, what we'll do is I'll provide your contact information for anybody who wants to potentially reach you, and hopefully they don't have to. Um, Thank you. But <laughs> it's almost like, uh, you know, you're a good guy to know, but you just not, you know, nobody wants to really use your services. So it's really kind of a oh, yeah. dichotomy between the two. Um, okay, super. This has been great. Uh, thanks to everyone for joining. Uh, I'll provide the recording afterwards for uh, you know for you guys to share. And looking forward to uh, seeing you next time. Um, so thanks very much. Okay. Thanks, David. Yeah. Bye bye. Thanks so much. Thanks. Take care.